Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to our brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy and in today's video, we will be going over how to make an R to reset in Roblox Studio. In this tutorial, we'll go over how to make a player reset when they click a key on their keyboard. Roblox does already have a built-in reset system in their escape menu, but some players prefer to be able to click on a key on their keyboard instead. Well, without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. So this is a very basic, simple, straightforward tutorial. So first of all, you want to make sure that your Explorer and Properties are enabled. If your Explorer and Properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on View, and enable Explorer and Properties, and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Now that you've got your Explorer and Properties enabled, you want to head over here to your Explorer, go down to Start a Player, click on the down arrow next to Start a Player, then go to your Start a Player Scripts, click on the plus button, and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of your starter player scripts, you want to head down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description. There's going to be one single code in this tutorial, so you just want to go and copy that, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now, as you guys can see, it is a very basic, simple, straightforward piece of code. So I'm just going to quickly go over it here for you guys so you can get a little bit of a better understanding and also change the, uh, the system to how you want it to work. So here on line one, it goes local function on key press input comma game process. So this local function is th th this on key press is what our local function is called, which is eventually called later further down there in the script. So that is our local function. If game process, then return end. I'll come back to this line or we'll make a little bit more sense here shortly. Then here on line three, it goes if input dot key code equals equals enum dot key code R, then so if the player clicks on the key code or our key on our keyboard R, then the rest of the script is going to continue. So this is what triggers the player to go and reset. Now you can go and change R to whatever you want your um, key uh, to be that the player has to click to then reset. So if you want it to be, for example, P, you go and change it to P. If you want it to be E, you go and change it to E. But I've just got it as R, simply because R basically represents reset. So I'm gonna keep it just like that. Then here on line four, it goes local player equals game.players.local player, that identifies our player. Then here on line five, it goes local character equals player.character. This is identifying our player's character. So then here on line six, it goes local humanoid equals character find first child humanoid. This identifies our humanoid, which you'll be able to change the health, the walk speed, and the jump power from. So if humanoid, then our humanoid.health is set to zero and that kills the player. Now, if you really want to make sure that the player does correctly die, depending on how quick your regeneration system is, you can go and set it to, for example, negative 100, or sorry, negative 10 or negative 100 if you really wanted to. But on default, a player will reset if it is set to zero. But sometimes, depending on your regenerative um, speed, it may occasionally bug out, but it's very rare that happens. So if you really wanted to, you can go and put negative 10, or you can just keep it as zero. It's totally up to you. But anyway, we identify our player's health. So if a player clicks on the key code R, then it identifies everything else here and it eventually ends up with our humanoid. If our humanoid is there in our player, then our humanoid.health is gonna be set to zero. Then down here on line 13, it goes game get service, use input service, dot input began, connect on press key. So if our input has began, it will then run this function. And then in the, the, the local function is exactly this. So. If that is called, which it is called down there, then this will run. So that is basically just calling our um, local function that we identified up there simply because the player has gone and clicked on the key code R. So once you've made your code adjustments, you wanna head over here, click on the X button next to your local script, and then let's go give it a test by clicking on play. Now, something else I should probably mention to you, you should also make it noted somewhere either in your game description or somewhere over the screen with a text label that a player is actually able to click R on their keyboard to reset, simply because many people will play the game without even knowing that they're able to click R to reset their player. So it's definitely worth noting it somewhere for the player to actually know. So anyway, if we go click on R on our keyboard now, we're running around, we can play the game. If I go click R, our player will reset simply because our health go below, goes below zero or is equal to zero or goes below zero. So our re character resets and we are back to main spawn. If I click it again, the character dies, resets, and it goes back to the main spawn. So relating back to line two, basically what that prevented was, if the player was to go and chat in chat right now and, they, and we didn't have line two there, what would happen if I t um, uh, typed, for example, right, I would die because I clicked R on my keyboard. So as you guys could see, I could type right there with line two. So watch what happens now if I go and remove line two. That is the, our line two of game process, then return end. If I go and remove that now, and we just have our script like that, watch, happen, watch what happens when I go and type something in chat, 
um, and what happens to the player. So if I go over here to the chat, I type in right, you're able to see the player dies simply because I clicked the R button. But that line too prevents the player from dying if you're typing in chat. The only time it will, it will um, kill the player is if you're playing in the game and you go and click R, then it will only kill you. But at the same time, without that second line, it will kill you even if you decide, had to type, for example, read, it would kill you. If you guys are a little bit lost and you're needing a little bit of assistance with this tutorial, please feel free to reach out to us on Discord via our ticket system and we'd be more than happy to help you out. But anyway guys, that is going to be it here for today's video. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell and also do consider liking the video, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.